The sweet sound of freedom for students. Pretty loud. <laughs> the annual tradition that marks the end of the year at One Elementary, plus why these seniors walk the halls of a local elementary, and the unlikely surprise reunion one of them found inside. And a championship winning finish you have to see to believe. Hello and welcome to Inside Vancouver Public Schools, I'm Chad Young. The school year comes to a close and at Hazeldell Elementary, the final bell is rung. In an annual event, the school's fifth graders get the chance to ring the school's ceremonial bell to mark the end of their time at the school. For many fifth graders, who started at Hazeldell as kindergartners, this was an exciting day and a long time coming. Uh, one out of ten. I think I'm a ten. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. I'm happy, actually. It felt really good because everyone was just cheering me on and I've just been waiting for it a lot. In addition to the student bell ringers, the school honored staff members who are moving on. Some are transitioning on to other schools, others are moving out of town, and some are retiring. They each rang the bell one time for each year of service. For Mrs. Hudson, that meant 24 rings. What a fun way to end the school year. School ended a week earlier for seniors. We tagged along with a group from Columbia River High School who, on the cusp of adulthood, got a reminder of where they came from. Amanda Richter has the story. Hopeful seniors in caps and gowns from Columbia River High School gather in the lobby of Eisenhower Elementary. They're here for a first of its kind event and they don't know what to expect. What they got was a hero's welcome. It was really good. Um, the experience was like heartwarming and I almost, it put me in tears basically. Um, I wasn't expecting that, so it was nice. For the seniors, it was a pat on the back for a job well done. For the elementary students? It was definitely very inspiring um, to see them with all the cords and medals that that could someday be me. For senior Jeremy Googe, serving as a role model is especially meaningful. I didn't even think I was going to make it, to be honest, because most of my family um, had a hard time through high school, so uh, it was, it's great to see myself be able to accomplish it on time. Jeremy had a strong role model when he was a first grader at Minnehaha Elementary. His teacher, Jennifer Blechschmidt. I called her Mrs. B because I couldn't pronounce her name. Now Mrs. B is the principal at Eisenhower, and today's event served as an unexpected reunion. I really remembered her a lot and it was great to see her. Wow, I was really surprised. Um, Jeremy is certainly a kid you will never forget. Uh, so to see him uh, walk through our halls and get a, a great big hug from him was, uh, it was great. For Mrs. B, it was a reminder of why she loves her job. Our teachers put a lot of energy into um, everything they do for their children, the whole child. And I think that knowing that you're a part of that and seeing them to the, to the finish line is the greatest reward really that there is. <laughs> yeah, he made it. This is really, really cool. Yeah. Inside Vancouver Public Schools, I'm Amanda Richter. Thanks, Amanda. Vancouver iTech Preparatory also tried something new this spring. The class of 2016 will go down in history as the first ever students to graduate from iTech. They first came together four years ago, nervous freshmen in a brand new high school. Now, these seniors at Vancouver iTech Preparatory gather one last time for a class photo. So this top row, everybody's looking at me. Nice job, gentlemen. This is the first graduating class at iTech. It's a new kind of school using projects rather than traditional teacher lectures. Each day it's kind of like a new thing. You, you never really get into a routine because there'll always be something different, whether it's like the schedule will be different or, um, or the teachers will be doing something different. It's just, you can never really fathom what's going to happen the next day, and that kind of keeps it interesting. The curriculum focuses on science, technology, engineering, and math, and the school community is tight. The teachers and the staff, um, they've been very supportive through all four years. The, the collaboration, teamwork, um, and the encouragement to think differently than than you would in a standard learning environment. The high school is on the Washington State University Vancouver campus and programs like Running Start with Clark College get kids ready for the next step. They really got me out into the college landscape and 
help me learn and broaden my horizons. As they look to their future, these students pause to take one more look back and smile for the camera. It's, it's been a great experience. I really enjoy the school, all the people here, and the, the teaching methods, and, and everything about this learning environment. It's a great place. It isn't just the students who are excited about iTech. The state of Washington just designated it as one of seven innovative schools. Principal Christina Eiermonger, seen here, oversees the program. Her school was selected for its level of creativity and experimentation, best practices, and several other criteria. iTech was the only school from southwest Washington to earn the honor this year. Over the years, Vancouver School of Arts and Academics and Sarah J. Anderson Elementary have also been tagged as innovative schools. If you want to see this year's graduates accept their diplomas, you're in luck. Most high schools produce their own graduation ceremony broadcasts, which can be seen right here on TV, etc. To check the schedule or even order your own copy of the program, head to the website on your screen. That's esd112.org slash tvetc. Three VPS student athletes took home state championships this spring. We begin with Erica Weems, a senior at Hudson's Bay High School. Erica was the big winner at the state track meet in Tacoma. She won both the 100 and 300 meter hurdles at the 2A level. This was Erica's third time at the state competition, so she was prepared for the challenge, but not necessarily the thrill of victory. I was just the only thing I could do after I won the 100 because I was just so ecstatic and just so happy for myself was the only thing I could do was just clap and yell. <laughs> so the 100, I was just like, woo, you know, this is over and I have a medal, so I was just happy for that. In addition to her championships, Erica was also named their all-region female track athlete of the year by the Columbian. She's off to Central Washington University next fall, where she'll run track and work toward her degree. Congrats to Erica. Erica wasn't the only all-region track athlete of the year. On the boys' side, the Columbian honored Skyview's Mason Scheidel. As Nick Vol reports, Mason earned it the hard way and in spectacular fashion. The dictionary definition of a jiffy is one one hundredth of a second. The definition of a champion? Mason Scheidel of Skyview High School. In the waning moments of the state 800 meters race in Tacoma, Mason was a step or two behind the leader. I was trying to get as fast as I could to try to catch up to the guy, so I was running as hard as I could. As they neared the finish line, Mason remembered something. My cross country coach told me that he dove at the finish line in his state championship race in his senior year. And so just in the back of my mind, I was there and I was like, all right, I'm going to try it. I'm just going to dive for it and take the pain of the ground, I guess. But As he sprawled across the finish line and tumbled across the rough track surface, Mason's race and his high school running career was over. It ended, he thought, in second place. I looked up, I t finally turned around and looked up, in the, looked up in the stands and my friend was up there and he was like, you got first place, you won by .01 seconds. And I was just like, no way. The photo finish proves it. Mason won by a jiffy. That dive ahead typified the extra effort that Mason, an all-league selection in three different sports, puts into everything. The continuous like preparation that you have to do with running to like stay in shape and to get better, it's really taught me like how to like do that in life, I guess. And so as I like move on and I have to like work hard to accomplish something that I know that like it requires effort each day to like get going. So. As he prepares to get going to the next phase of life, he pauses for a moment at the trophy case at Skyview, a place to remember great champions, champions like Mason Scheidel. People will probably talk about it for a while, so it's kind of cool to just like leave a lasting memory for people to remember you by, I guess. Inside Vancouver Public Schools, I'm Nick Vole. Thanks, Nick. Mason is set to start a two-year mission in Chile for his church beginning this summer. Way to go, Mason. Congratulations also go out to Spencer Tibbetts of Fort Vancouver High School. For the second time in three years, he's the state golf champion at the 3A level. Spencer won the championship in Spokane in exciting fashion. The junior made a birdie on the first hole of a playoff to take home the title. Tibbetts also won a state championship as a freshman and finished second last season. In addition, like Erica and Mason, the Colombian named Spencer the Golf All-Region Athlete of the Year. The Fort Center for International Studies boys soccer team exemplifies the global focus with local action that the Fort CIS teaches its students. From high above the soccer field at Fort Vancouver, it looks like just about any high school soccer team. 
It's when you get on the same level as the players that you start noticing something unique. For some, it starts with the greeting, Habibi. It means brotherly love in Arabic. Carlos Rodriguez speaks both English and Spanish, but is learning other languages and cultures from his teammates. We're like a family, you know. I feel like most of these, like some of these kids, like don't really like they're they get home and it's not like the right environment and then they feel like soccer is a way to escape all their problems and you know we just we're just out here having fun we teach each other our languages and you know we have a good time fort became a center for international studies this year and the soccer team embodies the four tenants of the fort vancouver cis investigate the world recognize perspectives communicate ideas and take action the first languages of players on the team spans the globe. Uh, I speak Korean. Arabic and English. Mandinko. It's a West African language. In the heat of the match, players often use other forms of communication. If anything, you can just yell and we'll pass the ball. We'll do whatever. I mean, we can read the game very well to know what they want. It's just kind of a body language thing. You can just base... You just like tell what they want based on their body language. Just send them a through ball, just send them a straight pass. Easy, easy, just, just gotta think. Oh, man. Stephanie Colantino teaches English language learners at Fort. She attends nearly every game. It's pretty amazing to see them in action out on the field and on the sidelines. Um, even though there might not be a common language at any given time, they're speaking native languages and they're completely understanding each other. Uh, they're having a good time. It's really, it's like a brotherhood. It's a beautiful thing to see. The Fort soccer team had a lofty goal this season, to make the playoffs. Right, you guys will leave your hearts on the field today, okay? Come everything come you got, please, boys. Everything you got today. Hey, this game's going to come down to who wants to make that first tackle? Who's going to do that last one? Come on, boys. This is a hard game. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go, boys. Come on. Choppers on three. One, two, three. Choppers! It's the last game of the season. Win it, and they head to the playoffs. Lose, their season is over. The game against Prairie didn't go the Trappers' way with a 1-0 loss. But many of this band of brothers will be back next year, hungry to get to the postseason. Bring it in. Let it the Fort CIS soccer team is already getting into condition for next season, and members of the team told me they can't wait to light up the Greater St. Helens League next year. A number of Vancouver students buzzed into Chicago for the National History and Citizenship Bees. Jason Lee Middle School's Andrew Douglas had a great showing. He finished second in the Citizenship Bee and 45th in the History Bee. Other students came from Eisenhower and Lakeshore Elementaries. To qualify, students had to succeed in the local and regional history bees. This photo came to us courtesy of Andrew's dad, Dave, who is a teacher in the district. Students in grades 7 through 12 have a great opportunity to learn this summer in a fun, free boat building program. The school district, the Foundation for Vancouver Public Schools, and the Wind and Oar Boat School are teaming up. Starting in August, students will design and build a boat, which they'll be able to launch at the end. This video is from last year's camp. To learn more and to sign up, head to vansd.org slash news center. Once you're on the website, you'll see the district has a whole list of things to do. Go to the district website and you'll get a huge list of camps, activities, and more. The links include physical activities like swimming, academic programs, and even how to get food for kids to replace the school lunches they get during the school year. Great job by the district web staff for compiling this resource. This was the last episode of New Stories for this school year. Although we have a year in review episode later this summer, we want to take a moment to thank all of the people who have helped us put the show together this year. That includes volunteers who helped collect the news and viewers like you, who not only watch the show, but also send us great story ideas. Until next fall, I'm Chad Young. Have a great summer.